Welcome to Electro Online. Here's our second video based upon a viewer's request. It deals with the, uh, the inclined plane. And it turns out that the question involved multiple portions to that question. It's actually really interesting. So it starts out by having an inclined plane with an angle of 35 degrees, a block with a weight of 500 newtons on the inclined plane, and with a static coefficient of friction of 0.3 and a kinetic coefficient of friction of 0.25. Although I don't think we ever use the kinetic uh, coefficient of friction in here. But the first part was asking what is the minimum force required to start pushing the block upward from rest, I'm assuming it's from rest because they didn't tell me specifically, and they wanted to know the magnitude and direction of the force, which makes it really interesting because, of course, you can push the block from different angles. You can push the block upward like this. You can also try to push it this way or this way. So what is the best angle that the force acts in and what is the magnitude of the force, the minimum magnitude of the force required to begin to push the block upward, which means we need to overcome the static coefficient of friction. Of course, if the block is already moving at a constant speed, then what is the force required to continue moving at that constant speed? But that's not what they were asking. It was more in terms of what is the minimum force required to start pushing the block upward, assuming from rest, and what is the magnitude and direction? Now, there's some other parts to it where the direction isn't necessarily all that clear, and that makes it really interesting. But here, it is no, there's no question that we want to push the block upward like this in the same direction as the incline. Because if we start pushing the block like this, part of the component of force will push the block against the incline, and because of the friction, that will cause more force needing to be required to push the block upward. So in this particular case, it makes sense to push the block upward like this. So let's go ahead and draw that force. Oh, I guess that should be straight. There we go. So that's the force we're looking for. And we know that it's going to be parallel to the incline. Now we just need to know the magnitude. To find the magnitude, we're going to find the exact force required to compensate for both the weight component down the incline and of course also the static friction caused by the block resting on the incline. So we start with the equation F equals MA and specifically of course we want the net force. And we want the net force required so that there's not going to be an acceleration. A is going to be equal to zero and therefore we end up with an F net force being equal to zero. So now all we have to do is add up all the components that aid the push upward and all the components that oppose. So this would be the force aiding minus the force opposing and that must add up to zero. So let's draw some of the forces on there to understand what we're dealing with using a different color. First of all we have the weight of the block downward mg which means we're going to have a perpendicular component and we're going to have a parallel component of the incline. If this angle here is theta, then the angle here is theta as well. So this becomes mg times the cosine of theta, and this here is the mg times the sine of theta. If we finish the, the triangle right here, you can see that's the right angle triangle. This is the hypotenuse, the adjacent side, and then this here would be the opposite side. That's where we get mg sine theta and mg cosine theta. Of course, that means we're going to have a normal force pushing in the opposite direction. So here, this is the normal force, and that green pen is almost dead, so we shouldn't use that one. Let's try this one here. Uh, normal force, yeah, it's a little bit better. There we go. And that would be equal to mg cosine theta. Of course, this force has to be the same as that one because that's a reactionary force of the, the inclined plane pushing back against the block. And then we are going to have a friction force. And the friction force is also going to be acting downward, right there. So this is the force friction. And by definition, the friction force is equal to the normal force times mu. The normal force is this force right here. So this is equal to mg cosine theta. And the whole thing multiplied by mu sub s. So that's the static coefficient of friction because we're starting from rest, so it's to overcome that static friction. Now we're ready to put everything into the equation. The aiding force is the force doing the push, so that's equal to the F. 
minus, now there's two forces opposing, we have the mg sine theta opposing, mg sine theta, and we have the mg cosine theta mu sub s, which is the friction force that also opposes the motion, so we have mg cosine of theta times mu sub s, and all that must add up to zero. Now, of course, that is the force required to overcome the friction. We probably need a momentary additional force, very, very slight, to get the whole thing to start moving. Of course, once the block is moving, then the coefficient of friction becomes kinetic, and then we need less force to keep the block sliding upward with zero acceleration. So therefore, when we solve for this, we're going to move these two to the other side, and essentially we want F to be greater than mg sine of theta plus mg cosine of theta times mu. So what we're doing here is we realize that if it's exactly equal, it won't get the block moving. You need something slightly greater to give that initial acceleration for a moment so that the block then will begin to move. And that's why we need greater than rather than equal to to be just slightly larger than what's required to move at a constant speed or to get, to, to get it to overcome that friction force. So now all we have to do is plug in what these numbers are. So we need the force to be greater than mg is 500 newtons times the sine of 35 degrees minus 500 newtons times the cosine of 35 degrees times mu, that would be the static coefficient of friction, which is 0 0.3. And so that will tell us how much force is required to get the block to move upward. So F must be greater than, let's grab a calculator to calculate these. So 35, take the sine of that, times 500, that gives us 286.8 newtons. 286.8 newtons plus 35, take the cosine, times 500, times 0.3, and that gives us 122.9 newtons, 122.9 newtons, and so the force must be greater than, so 286.8 plus 122.9, that gives us 409.7, 409.7 newtons. Essentially, let's round it off to 410 newtons. If the force exceeds 410 newtons, the block will begin to move. And then if you drop it down to whatever force required to move at a constant speed, the block will then move up the incline at a constant speed. So that is the first part of the question. What's the force required? 410 newtons and in the same direction as the inclined plane going upward. Again, if you start pushing at an angle like this, then part of the force will push the block into the inclined plane, causing the friction force to increase, and then you would need additional force to get the block to move upward. So that's the minimum force required, and that is how that's done. So if there's no friction, does the, does the magnet or the direction of the force need to be parallel to the to the um, plane, incline plane? So what would happen if there was no friction at all? Then what happens is, if you're going to move the direction of the force, then only the component parallel to the incline would push the block upward. The perpendicular component of the force would simply push it into the block. It wouldn't increase the friction force, but you would have less of the force pushing the block upward, requiring you to increase the total force. So even if there's no friction, you'd still want to push parallel to the incline. You didn't say that earlier. Yeah, that's a good observation, a good question. <laughs> if you said if, uh, because of the static friction, you want to parallel, you want to push the, the, man, the direction of the force needs to be parallel to the incline. But that makes it imply that if you have no static friction, then you don't have to you're correct. Since, since, I in, since I said that because of the friction being there, you have to push it parallel, might imply that if there's no friction, you, it doesn't have to be parallel, but in this case, it would have to be parallel as well if there was no friction. The reason why I attacked it this way is because it did have friction, so we didn't have to consider the situation where there was no friction in this particular problem. <laughs>
Yes, I'm trying to save my pride. 